Okay, there are only four types. You have positive gradient, negative gradient, zero gradient, and undefined gradient. Okay? So, in year nine, there are only four types, and literally, that's what we're going to do or use to analyze your graphs. And that's what this whole exercise is about. A, T, C, D, and E is analyzing the gradients that you have. Okay? Now, we give a special name to it. We say that when the derivative, or when the gradient, is zero, we call it a stationary point. Why is it special? Because the only time you're ever going to get a flat line as a tangent line, okay, is only when part of a graph. Which part do you think, if I draw a tangent line, I need to touch that once, where would it be? Yeah. Turning points is the only part where if I draw any graph, doesn't matter what graph I draw, I'll do this, right? That could be my graph. Now, if I draw a tangent at this point, that's clearly a positive gradient. If I put a point here and I do a tangent line, that's a negative gradient. The only time you can get a zero gradient, which is a flat line, is right at the top. Because it goes positive, positive, it gets flatter, 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 and at this point, the very top, would be zero. So it's positive, zero, and then negative. It goes negative, 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 zero. Positive, 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 zero. Negative, 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 zero. So the special thing that when the gradient equals zero, the gradient of the tangent line equals zero, it's a stationary point. We call it stationary because it was moving and then up until that point it stops. It changes direction. It went from positive to zero to negative. Okay? Or negative, zero to positive. That's why we call it stationary points. Now, if you understand that concept that it is just the gradient of a tangent line at one point, stationary point is just the name of the gradient equals zero. So the gradient is the tangent line, and the tangent line at the gradient of zero means it's just a horizontal line, which is what the fact was saying. So all you're doing is just analyzing that. So the benefit of knowing when the gradient equals zero is what Akita said, it just tells you the turning point. But the turning point could have the maximum turning point, or it could have the minimum turning point. So we talk about different types of stationary points. And that's what we're going to get you to do in this exercise, is to understand the different types of stationary points, how to find the stationary points, which really is just do y dx equals zero. And that's how easy it is. That's the one mark for next year. If you don't know what it is and it just says stationary point at da 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 da, you show this step and you derive it correctly, there you go, you get one mark. That's how easy it is. Okay? It's the same thing over and over. It's just whether you can solve it afterwards, that goes back to your algebra and everything. So the theory is just saying when you have a stationary point, you have a maximum or a minimum point, it's when the derivative equals zero. That's all it means. Okay? So, let's have a look at the types. Okay, so, uh, what I wrote there is gradient of the tangent line is zero. That's when you have a stationary point. When is the gradient of the tangent zero? It's only at a maximum or minimum. Now, let's have a look. Since we're saying that the gradient, when it's zero, you have a maximum line. So, local maximum, local minimum occurs at these two points here. Okay, so you can see, if you're tangent line, in order to cross the maximum, that is a zero gradient. If I drew the minimum to touch the minimum, that is also another tangent line. It's a zero gradient tangent line. Okay, so you've got two there. Now, when you find the derivative and you let it equal to zero, all you're doing is you're trying to solve for when. See that x value here? When will you have a maximum? When on the x-axis will you have a minimum? That allows you to find turning points. So back in cubics, term two, when you guys asked me, is there a way to find turning points? Or like you said, can we factorize it to find turning points? I said, no. I said, what you can do is calculus. This is where you do it. This is now where, when you're doing in year 12, you're sketching cubic graphs, you have to label turning points if they tell you to. And the only way to do it is derivatives and inflection points. Very good. So here we go. Now. We've got two points there. I've just said we've got a local maximum, local minimum, where it has a stationary point. But then that also means, uh, I'll go back to this proof later. Types of stationary points. We talked about local maximum, local minimum, but there's also one more which you just mentioned, Trent. The inflection. The inflection. Okay. Now I'll show you. This chart here, I want you to copy down just a, just a sort of a thought. Up here, I wrote f dash of x, f dash of x, f dash of x. Notice that it's all zeros in the middle. All the zeros just means that's when the gradient equals zero. So I'm going to write m next to it so you remember. 
m equals zero, m equals zero, m equals zero. So that means your tangent line is horizontal, horizontal, horizontal. Okay. So if in your graph you found the stationary point, this is what the tangent line looks like. Now, if you pick the point just before that, like just before the zero, and you found the tangent line as well, for it to be a maximum, it would have to be a positive gradient. Okay, so for example, if I drew a maximum, see so right up here, that's when the gradient is zero. If I picked any point on the left, it's a positive gradient. If I picked any point on the right, it's a negative. So that's why they're saying the only way for you to get a local maximum is any number before whatever this number is that gives you zero, then this should give you a positive gradient and that should be a negative gradient. So if you can show that, this is called a local maximum. How would you have a local minimum? The only way that would occur is if the one before that, the gradient before that point is a negative gradient and then zero, then positive. That implies it's a local minimum. Yes. Uh, for the, the, the very the, the very turning point. Yep. Yep. Right at that point, the very top point, the very bottom, the gradient is zero. But everywhere in between, like after or then before, should either be positive or positive. Okay. So, in this case here, local minimum, again, same thing. If I drew a graph, you can see a local minimum implies that at the very bottom, if I drew a tangent line, it's got a gradient of zero. If I drew another point here, drew a tangent line, it's positive. Tangent line negative. That's why we say negative, zero, positive. So what are the types of stationary points you can have? We've got local max, we have local minimum, and the last one is it doesn't have to be negative, zero, positive, or positive, zero, negative. It could also be positive, zero, then positive. What's an example of that graph? A cubic graph. In cubic graph, you start off with a positive gradient, and you get flatter and flatter and flatter. At some point, somewhere which we call the inflection point, at that point, you get to the gradient zero, and it slowly increases back to positive again. And then it goes negative. Okay, so then it becomes positive, zero, positive. We call that an inflection point. But similarly, you can draw a cubic graph the other direction. I'll do another color so you don't get confused. You could have it like this. But that implies. And I'm going down that negative gradient, negative, negative, and at some point somewhere here, it goes flat. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you could have a graph where it doesn't have a stationary point at all. You could have something like this. See, this green graph that I just drew doesn't have a stationary point. It, it continually is negative, 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 but it never really is flat. That's a tan graph. If you actually try to find the derivative of a tan, it doesn't have any stationary point. So it just it looks like it's getting to zero, but it doesn't. And you can prove that by finding the derivative of it, and you find that it doesn't have any points at the gradient of zero. Okay, so these are the points for year 12. You will see more questions with the tan, but at the moment, you're going to be working with these three types. You either have a local max, local minimum, and a local standard point in the Okay, so what I've just summarized for you is 18c and 18b. So what have I really said? 18c was when the derivative equals zero or the gradient zero, it's got a stationary point. That's what 18c is about. What's 18d about? How do you define which one it is? Okay. And what we do, which I'll show you later, is we're going to use a chart, we call it a sign diagram, to prove that we have a local max and a local min plus stationary point. So that's what your year 11 expectation is in your exam. There will be a question that's worth three marks, and you'll have to show why you know it's a point inflection or a minimum or a maximum. All you have to do is show the zero gradient, where it's zero, show anything after or before, and show what kind of gradient it is. Then you can map it out and say, well, it has to be a local maximum. Okay? That's what 18D is about. What's 18E? We're now adding on top of that. Sometimes, I'm just going to move forward. Sometimes, uh, let's go, not that one, not that one. Sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> here we go. Sometimes, just because you have a local max and local minimum, it doesn't mean that it is the largest number or the smallest number. So we have a distinction between it now. So in this example here, we can see the largest number that you can have. When they say find the absolute maximum, they're really saying what's the largest y value you can have. 
clearly in the graph, this is the highest y value you can have. The smallest y value that it can have is down here. And it just so happens that this point here would have a stationary point. It's a turning point there. But what kind of stationary point is this? What is this called? No. Well, it is the absolute minimum, but what type of stationary point is it? There's only three types. Local and minimum. Okay, that's a local minimum, but it is also an absolute minimum. And that's in year 12, this is normally worth three to four marks. You just have to prove that. Because when you find a derivative and you let it equal to zero, you only get this. You will get this point, this point, this point, this point. You find all one, two, three, oh, there's another one over here. One, two, three, four, five. You find five stationary points, but you have no idea what type they are. And the only way to know what type they are is you start mapping it out. You find the y values, y values, y values, and you get the coordinates. Once you get the coordinates and you find the endpoints, that's the only time you can find what is the maximum, what has the maximum y value, and what has the smallest y value. That's why it's tedious. So in year 12, not only do you have to test the endpoints to find out the coordinates of the endpoints, you have to also find the coordinates of the stationary points. In each one, that's how you know what is the highest value and what's the smallest value, and it takes a long time to do. Now in the exam, you're not going to get six or seven points to work with. Normally you get two stationary points and two endpoints. And your job is to figure out which one has the highest value. So a lot of the times, the mistakes that year 12s do, is if I give them a domain, I said it was from, let's say, two point, negative 2.5 to, what's that? that's, let's say that's 3.5, a lot of students just sub in the values. They just sub in the values, sub in the value, and they're like minimum, maximum. It's not true. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. When would you have a minimum and a maximum based on the domain? You can have something like this. If I told you it was between zero and one, and I drew a graph that looked like this. Like that, and I'm gonna do it in red. Oh, is it too light? I'll do red. If I drew a graph where it starts at, oh, you know what, I'm gonna start again. Yeah. If I set from zero and I drew like this. See that graph. If I told you the domain started at zero to one, it makes sense that the endpoints, when you sub zero, that is the smallest value, and you sub one, that's the highest value, right? And then the stationary point is the point of inflection, okay? But then that doesn't mean that it's always the endpoints will be minimum maximum, because I could draw it the other way around. I could have drawn it like this, if I do it in blue now. See, I could have drawn it in blue, I said from zero to one, then you could say, oh, well, when you sub zero, that should be your maximum, absolute max, absolute minimum, point of inflection, okay? But then sometimes you could get a graph that though it's zero to one, maybe it starts here. I'm gonna just rub, uh, do another one. Let's do purple. I could start from here and it goes up, comes down, and it finishes there. So my purple graph, where you can see, if what is the absolute maximum, it's clearly up here. That's where the local maximum is too. That's a stationary point. And that's my endpoint that just so happens to be the absolute minimum as well. So the only way to really know is generally you can sketch the graph. What's the problem? Why don't students do that? Exam one. Exam one, you don't have a calculator. You can't sketch it. So you have to use your logic. You have to use the endpoint sub in zero, sub in one, find the coordinates, and then find the maximum minimums find the coordinates for each one, and then you map it. So if you mapped it, this is what would happen. You wouldn't actually have to draw the graph, you would just map it, it would look something like this. You start off with the endpoints, there's your endpoints, zero and one. Then you find your um, stationary points, it could be here, it could be there, and then you find the coordinates for it. If it's like that, you can predict. If these two are the stationary points, then you can say, well, they can't be the minimum. Which one has the smallest y value? That one. Which one has the highest y value? That one. So that's why that's when you can say this stationary point is the absolute maximum, and this point here is the absolute minimum. So it's a tedious work. The idea is very easy. The idea is compare all the y values. The idea is find all the coordinates, compare the y values. But to get those y values is the most difficult in exam one. Why? Negatives, fractions, algebra, all your sine, cos, tan, log, exponential, that's where it gets tricky. Okay, so you remember you can have all the derivatives, 
for all functions, you have to know all the algebra for each one so that you can guess which one's the largest and which one's the smallest and prove that. So the theory that I'm showing you is not hard. What is hard is being able to get there. So you know what you need to do, it's just hard to get there if your algebra is not strong. That's why there's a lot of emphasis on making sure that you've got your log exponentials, circular functions, polynomials, all of that will summarize calculus well. Okay, so a lot of times my students will understand what I'm saying, they can't apply it because they, they struggle with fractions, percentages, ratios, or whatever it is. Uh, that, that's what prevents you from getting the answer, not the theory. The theory is pretty straightforward. Okay? But here we go, let's do an example. Let's do a quick example and I'll show you with this sheet here. I've got tangents and normals and I want to teach you how to use a CAS because in exam two, there's a shortcut to find your tan, tangent line and normal line and stationary points with the CAS. I want to show you how to do it on these two. Okay? So here we go. Let's do an example. Let's go back. Uh, let's go back to is it this one. Oh, no, it's this one. All right, here we go. 18C. Starting with stationary points. Let's revise what you just learned. First question says, find the coordinates. So remember, you want to find the coordinates of the stationary points of each of the following functions. So let's do the first one. I've got A, x squared, y equals to x squared minus 6x plus 3. I want to find the stationary point. How do you find stationary points here? What do you have to do? There's only one skill you've got to demonstrate in year 12 to get that one mark. What do you have to do? Stationary points. What's the definition of derivative? Derivative means find where the gradient of a tangent line equals zero. That's it. Your first step, as soon as you see the word stationary points, you should be doing find dy dx, which is the gradient. I want that to equal to zero. Okay? So your job is to find the derivative. So let's go. Using all your rules that you've learned so far, dy dx, what's the derivative of x squared minus 6x plus 3? What does that equal to, let's go with Olympia. What's the derivative of x squared minus 6x plus 3? Good. 2x. 2x and what? Minus 6. Very good. Okay, so using a power rule, we know the derivative of x squared. Drop down the power and minus the power by 1, so 2x. Drop down the power because it's x to the power of 1, so 1 times negative 6 is negative 6, but then 1 take away 1 is 0, so x to the power of 0 is 1. And finally, derivative of 3, we know it's 0. So that's why the answer, derivative, is 2x minus 6. Now, I found the derivative, but what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find stationary points. What do we know about stationary points again? Good, dy dx equals zero. So that means this is equal to zero. So you got the derivative, 2x minus six. What you're doing here is you're saying the gradient equals zero. Let's find where on the x-axis that you have the gradient of zero. Let's solve for this. What would x equal to? Three. three. Three, very good. So if you solve for it, x equals three, what does that mean? It just means on your x-axis, when you have three, somewhere, you don't know where the coordinate is, you just know when x equals three, somewhere you have a stationary point. I don't know which one it is, but I know it's a stationary point. I know at that point it could be a maximum, it could be a minimum, it could be a point of inflection, I have no idea. Now the logic, it's a quadratic. So if it's quadratic, if it's positive, then this stationary point has to be minimum. Minimum. It's a local minimum. Okay? Logically. But you, you can prove that as well. Okay, so right now all I know is on this x equals 3, I've got a stationary point. They asked me to find the coordinates. Now I've got x equals 3. How do I find the coordinates? I've got x equals 3. So in terms of coordinates, I've got 3. I'm missing the y. How do I find y? So we're back into which one? Very original. Yeah, don't confuse that. A lot of year 11s mix this up. They will take the 3 and they will sub it back in here. And what do you expect if you sub 3 back in here? What would you get? 0. Zero. Because at x equals 3, it was a stationary point. So if you sub it back into a derivative, 
that just tells you the gradient is zero. You knew the gradient is zero already. Okay? So you sum it back into this function to find y coordinate. You want to know the coordinates. So you know x equals three. Find y. Right there. Y equals two, three squared minus six times three plus three. Work it out. Three squared is nine. Take away six times three is eighteen. So nine minus eighteen, which is minus nine plus three. Minus 6. So now I know the coordinates. I know when x equals 3, y is negative 6. So right here I can say at negative 6, this is my point. Now in year 11 and 12, just because you know the graph, it's a quadratic, you can't say yes. It has to be a local minimum you actually have to prove it. Okay, this is for 18d now. So I'm doing 18c, but 18d would require you to prove that. So now we've found the state for one. We know it's right here. At that point, it's a local minimum, local max, or a point of inflection. I know the answer is the local minimum, but you can't just say, I know. You can't write the answers. I know the answer has to be local minimum. You have to prove it. So how do you prove it? What I showed in the last slide with all the charts. How do you prove it? Now, I'm going to do a table. I'm going to rub this side off. Let's do a table. This is called a sign diagram. Sometimes in your exams, they'll tell you to use a sign diagram to prove it. So I'm going to do it in red. Over here, we're going to prove it. So here we go. We've got x. Now I know at x equals 3, the gradient dy dx was equal to 0. So I know the shape of the graph looks like this. It's a horizontal line. That's what I know. At x equals 3, gradient was 0, so it's a horizontal line. If you want to prove it's a local minimum, that means on the left, what kind of gradient should it have? Negative. Then on the right, it has to be? If you can prove that, voila, you've got your answer. That's proving. Okay, so you know it needs to look something like this. That's the only way. Negative gradient, then zero, then positive. That's the only way you show a local minimum. So how do you show that? You've got to pick any number you want. Any number you want, less than three, greater than three, so that to check if the right. gradients are true. So I would probably pick four, and I'll pick one or zero. Okay, if I pick zero, that's the easiest one to do. Okay, so I'm gonna pick zero. Here we go, I'm gonna do it in blue. Pick zero, pick four. Now my pick zero, yeah. I wanna know what the gradient equals to. So I'm gonna sub zero into the gradient formula. When x is zero, what's my gradient equal to? Minus six. You sub zero in, two times zero is zero, zero minus six, gradient is negative 6. So I now know this gradient here must be negative 6. And that's true. I have a negative gradient. Okay? And then on the right, it has to be 4. Yeah. So if I test 4, I say, well, what's the gradient when x equals 4? Sub 4 in, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 6 is? 8 minus 6 is? 2. Okay. 8 minus 6 is 2, and so if I run it in, uh, gradient is positive 2, and I've shown it. It's got a negative gradient, 0 gradient, positive gradient, then I can say, I can now say therefore, we have a local minimum at, there we go. What I've just done with you, 18, 18D. Okay, 18D. I've just taken 18C and took another step by proving it's my Okay, so 18D is just proving the type. 18A was the final coordinates. Okay, so A, you found the coordinates. I mean, sorry, 18C found the coordinates. 18D proved. How do we feel? Pretty good? Yes. Okay. Because I know at three, and it's easy to Alright. Now, I'm going to hand out this sheet. I'm going to show you how to use a CAS. If you have a CAS, I'll show you how to use the tangent line function and how to do the normal function and how to do this question exactly the same way. On a CAS. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to pass it on? Here we go. Let's get your CAS out. Uh, 
<laughs> All right. If you have your cows on you, I'm going to go to first question. Here we go. Listening. Here we go. Question one. On your sheet, it says, find the equation of the tangent. Find the equation of the tangent to the following curves at the points indicated. So, they tell you that at x equals negative 1, find what the tangent line is. Now, you can do what I taught you yesterday's lesson. Find the derivative, sub in x equals negative 1, find the gradient, find a point, and then find c. Right? That is all manually. I'm teaching you now how to do it all in one go with a calculator. So, you need to do both. You need to learn how to do it manually, and you need to know how to do it calculator-wise. Okay? So, how do you do it on a calculator? You got x squared minus 2x plus 5. This is what I want you to do. On your CAS, go to menu. Go to calculus, because we're obviously in calculus. If you go all the way down to number 9, it says tangent line. Yeah, you got tangent line. So, menu 4, 9. That will give you the tangent line. Now, if you press enter, the yeah, tangent line, what do you put in the brackets? First one is you're going to type in the equation. You don't need a y, you don't need anything. Just type in the equation. So here we go. As an expression. As an expression. So I'm going to type in the equation. It's x squared minus 2x plus 5. So here we go. x squared minus 2 times x plus 5. This is my curve. Okay. So that's my curve, x squared minus 2x plus 5. Now when you find the derivative, usually it's y equals x. So if you find a derivative, it's dy dx. Right? The dx means it's with respect to x. It means that we are differentiating anything with an x. So in your calculator, sometimes they don't know what letters you want to differentiate. So you have to tell it. You have to say, comma x. You have to say, comma x. means that I'm going to differentiate with respect to x. Okay. Now once you know it's with respect to x, then what they want to know next is where. If we're differentiating with x, then where are we differentiating at? What gradient am I looking at? So, back to your question, it said when x equals negative 1. That's what it wanted. So at negative 1, that's what you type in, you say negative 1. So what? if I summarize what this is saying is, find the tangent line, this curve, differentiate it with respect to x, when x is negative 1. That's what it, essentially what it's saying. Okay? And it'll do all the set of calculations that you would normally do, where you differentiate it, sub in negative 1, Get the gradient, find the coordinates when x equals negative 1, sum it in to find c. If you did all that by hand, then doing it all in one go. Okay, so if you press enter now, this will give you the answer for the tangent line. So I know the gradient is negative 4, minus f is at 4. So negative 4x plus 4. That's my equation of the tangent line. Okay, so the equation of the tangent line, based on the calculator, tells me that it is at negative 4x, that's a positive 4. This is the line on your quadratic, whatever the quadratic is, at x equals 1, you've got, actually it can't look like that, it would have to be something more like that. You get a negative gradient, that's all it is. It's just telling you that some quadratic that you have at x equals 1, was it at x equals 1 or negative, no, negative 1, sorry, it's the other way. Negative 1. Yep. Sorry, my bad. Let's draw that again. It's just saying you've got some sort of quadratic graph like that, and let's say negative one's over here. At this point, the gradient or the line, the equation of this tangent line is y equals to negative 4x plus 4. That's what it means. That's what you've done. Okay, essentially, that's what you've done. You've just said some quadratic equation at x equals negative 1, find the gradient, and you found the gradient is negative 4 if you did it by hand. And then once you get that, find the coordinates to find C. That's the equation. That's the equation that they've given you. If you want to find normal line, it's the same thing. Okay, so in exercise 18A, you have to find the tangent and normal. You can do the same thing. So if I want to find the normal line now, same drill, go back to menu, calculus, and instead of tangent line, just right under it is normal line. Type it in, same thing. X squared. Minus 2 times x plus 5, respect to x, at negative 1. 
Press enter, and it makes sense. See, if you took the two gradients, negative four times a quarter is negative one. They're perpendicular. Okay. So this is to do it with the calves for multiple choice questions for next year. Next year, they expect you to find tangents and normals, and you have to do it like this. Don't do it by hand. It takes too long. Okay, so you're meant to be able to do this with CAS exam one. You do what I've been teaching you for the yesterday class. Okay. That's how you do that. Cool. All right, I'm just a bit mindful with the time. With a yeah, I'll show you how to do it on a stationary point, like how to solve. But you do what I've I've always been teaching to find the function. Actually, you know what? I'll show you how to find the derivative. The CAS, a shorthand method. Here we go. Let's say what we did today in class, we just did find stationary points. I said derive the function and let it equal zero, right? Then I want you to define this function here, x squared minus 6x plus 3. So let's do that. I'm going to go define. Anyone remember the shortcut to do menu? Uh, define. Menu 1, 1. Oops, sorry. Menu 1, 1. Or I'll, I'll just do it again. Menu actions, which is 1, define f of x is equal to x squared minus 6x, what was it again, plus 3, okay? Define the function. Now, how do you find the derivative? You can go to menu, calculator, uh, calculus, and then derivative, so menu 4, 1, or on your calculator, if you do this, hold, press the shift button, and then press the minus button, you get the derivative, okay? So let's do it again. Press the shift button, press the minus button. Gives you the derivative. So, what goes on the bottom? It's dy dx, okay, or dy dz, or whatever variable you want to work with. But in our case, we're working with x's. So on the bottom there, it should be x. This should be x. And what's here? Well, you define the function already, so just type f of x. Instead of typing the equation again, you can type f of x. Press enter. That's exactly the same answer we got when we did it by hand. See, 2x minus 6, the derivative is 2x minus 6. We've got the same. Now, what did we want before? We wanted to find when the gradient equals 0. So what you can do now is you can solve. You can solve for x. So how do you do that? Menu, algebra. So menu 3, 1, solve. 4, and now if you move your cursor up, if I press up, up, and press enter, you don't have to type it again. What does this mean? It means find the derivative when it equals to 0. Solve for that, comma, what am I trying to solve for? X. Okay? So if you really read what I've just done here, all I just did is solve for the derivative, which is this, Solve when it equals to zero, I want you to find x. That's what it means. Okay? I just want you to find x. So if you press enter, you get what you want. x equals three. But you want to know the coordinates. You've got x equals three to find the y value, suck three back in. So here we go. F of three. Bam. Done. So I did everything you just did with me with a calculator. To find the function, find the derivative, solve the derivative equals zero. I found where x is, find y, and sort of make it to the original. So f of 3. Negative 6, so I know the coordinates is at 3, negative 6. Okay, so on your worksheet, there's tangents and normals. I want you to be able to do it by hand and calculator. And on the very bottom question 3, that's to find stationary point and its nature. Okay, that's what I want to practice. Tomorrow's lesson will do maximum, minimum, and anti derivatives. Finish off on a Friday. Wednesday, you got to. Uh, Sorry, yeah. So Wednesday would be your double session after the Melbourne Cup. So you lose two sessions with me next week. And we then finish off with whatever we need to do for the sacks and whatnot. And then you have one whole week of revision and I'm done. Okay, so the aim is to finish the course by this Friday. Okay, so you've got anti-derivatives. You learn pretty much all of the course for calculus. Okay, that's pretty much what you need. All right.